Hey, what's up, Guardian? Stevie L here, bringing you a little bit of Destiny PvP action today. We've got some Iron Banner going on with a little bit of control gameplay, and we are going to be talking about a couple of big things that came out of yesterday's sort of ride-along live stream for the April Spring Update, talking a bit about the things we're going to be earning once the update goes live. And oh man, it was uh, pretty much as good as last week's Prison of Elders stream. We got a lot of stuff to get hype about, some things that we were expecting, and some things that we weren't. But, before we dive into all of that, Lord Saladin has returned and the Iron Banner is back. And you know what? It's Control again and I'm actually playing through it this time. And uh, thus far, it hasn't been too bad. This is about my second Iron Banner match of the day. And, uh, ooh, get out of here, son, with that garbage. Get this knife in the face. <laughs> a little bit of lag there on his death, but uh, I'm, I gotta say, you know, it's been a while since I did some Destiny PvP, so getting back into it was a little bit of a shock. Before I recorded this video in the Iron Banner, I uh, decided to jump into some matches, see if I can get back into it, and I'll admit, it took, like, maybe three or four matches before I could really start saying, okay, this, this feels a little bit more normal now. And uh, the main reason behind that was because for like my first three matches, I simply couldn't get into a decent lobby. Connections are still buns, and that's something I hope they really address next week in the Sandbox update. Please, 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 for the love of everything holy, turn off skill-based matchmaking. It has absolutely destroyed the Crucible. But after a couple matches, things evened out. I started getting some better connections, and then I started playing Iron Banner, and all has been well thus far. You guys are going to notice I am using that Arminius D auto rifle. This thing is amazing. I've had one for a long, long time. But uh, for you guys out there who picked up an Arminius D gunsmith package a couple of weeks ago and haven't turned it in, now is the time. Roll number three on this baby is about as perfect as perfect can get for this type of gun. It is rocking crowd control. It's rocking counterbalance. It's rocking braced frame. So it is as stable as stable can be on a bullet holes like this. And uh, the gun's natural aim assist of 80, I do believe, makes it an obvious, obvious choice. You want to pick this thing up. It's pretty much just as good as the Doctrine of Passing. You know, if not a little bit better. While it doesn't stick to enemies just as well as the Doctrine, it does have a larger magazine size, and as long as you can keep your gun steady, this thing is going to be dropping people all over the place. It is my new uh, primary of choice. But alright, that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're not here to talk about the state of the Crucible. That's next week. Right now, we're talking about the things that we can earn in the April Spring Update, and oh man, are there a lot. So we're going to be going over things very quickly. Number one, they added a no HUD option. Now, this might not mean too much to a lot of people out there, but to guys like me who make videos, and especially guys like me who love to take screenshots of the game, because Destiny really is just an absolutely gorgeous game, this is fantastic. I love the option to turn off the HUD there. We've also got a bunch of new faction armor sets, all of which look unique and really, really cool. We had a bit of a fashion show going on during the uh, Bungie stream. We've got, of course, the new emotes, some new ships, and new, some new sparrows, some of which you'll be able to uh, get via an item called the Sterling Treasure, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. We're also getting more vault space, basically an extra tab. Which is good, you know. More space to store my stuff is always appreciated. And they uh, talked a little bit more about the Taken version of the Winter's Run Strike where we take on Axor the Archon Priest. Basically, it's going to give new Taken-looking weapons. They're, uh, they're adding strike-specific gear that's going to be Taken-themed. Now, the only thing we got to see was the shotgun, but man, did that shotgun look pretty cool. Unfortunately, we don't know if they've got any new abilities. As far as we know, they just operate like normal weapons. But, you know... It's all about the glamour there. We've also got several new paths to gain 335 gear. They elaborated a bit more on uh, some of the in-game activities that you can use to get to max level. You don't just have to run Prison of Elders, which is great. You can also do Trials of Osiris. You can get to 335 from Exotic Engrams. You can get to 335 from Iron Banner and from Strike Exclusive Rewards. Multiple paths to in-game is exactly what you want in a game like Destiny, and that was one of my biggest problems right now. The real only way to get to in-game consistently is the raid, and uh, I always felt like there should have been more than just the raid and maybe Trials of Osiris. And I mean, of course, you can get to in-game. You can get in-game level gear right now, which is up to 320 from stuff like Trials and uh, Iron Banner, but it's nowhere near as consistent uh, across the board. So it's good to see that we're going to be able to get 335 gear from multiple sources. Next up, we've got, of course, the King's Fall raid has been updated. Normal mode will have drops up to 320, while hard mode will have drops up to 330 light. Now, they did warn people that uh, 
Before you can get gear up to 330, you'll need to wait for a small hotfix to go live. So for you guys who are ready to run the hard mode of the raid on April 12th, wait until that hotfix gets active or else you won't be getting the 330 gear. We've also got some increased reputation gains across the board to help leveling those factions in the Vanguard faster. Thank goodness for that. And we've got a new item called the Sterling Treasure, although it's, I guess, more like a new package item like what you'd get from uh, the Eververse Trading Company. The Sterling Treasure is a treasure box which offers a guaranteed item and up to three possible items. Now, those guaranteed items are generally cosmetic armor pieces. Think Sparrow Racing League, like the racing suit that you could get that you can then infuse with light up to whatever your maximum light level is. And then the possible items range from stuff like ships to uh, items that boost your reputation gains to sparrows and all kinds of other things. It's actually pretty cool. You'll be able to get these sterling treasures from several different sources. You'll be able to get one each week from the Postmaster, one for completing the level 41 Prison of Elders once per week, and one for your first completion of the weekly Crucible activity. Not the bounty, but the actual weekly Crucible playlist that changes out every single week. Or you can purchase them with silver. That's the other option. Now, of course, because of microtransactions, a lot of people are focusing on that silver option, saying, oh, more pay to win. But it really isn't. You can earn these from several different sources in PvE, so I really don't have too much of a problem with being able to purchase them with silver. It's a lot different from the uh, current supply box situation over in Black Ops 3. But we'll talk more about that in another video. Now, the other big thing that was shown off uh, very heavily in this stream is the new Chroma system. Chroma is used to change the look of a weapon or a piece of armor. You can select from only a few colors, but they have quite the effect on some pieces of weapons and some armors. It's just basically a further way to allow you to customize your Guardian's look. In some of the examples they showed, which we've got up on screen right now, you can actually kind of make your guns and your armor light up. You can change sort of the LEDs on them. I thought it looked pretty cool. I am a little bit bummed that you only have a few colors to choose from, those colors being red, blue, white, and yellow. But uh, overall, I cannot wait to get my hands on this. I mean, you guys know me. I'm the guy who's still running around with tons of year one armor because I think it looks cool. Now you're telling me I can uh, modify the color set for each piece of gear and add LED lights? I'm sold. I am totally and completely sold for that. Now, Chroma can only be obtained from Sterling Treasure, as specifically some of the armor sets that you can get from Sterling Treasure, which you can break down into little pieces of Chroma that you can apply to other armors. Or, if you get lucky, you'll just get some Chroma to drop whenever you open up a Sterling Treasure, which again, you can get three of per week in PvE, or you can just buy some with silver. Alright, so let's move on here. The big surprise, at least for me from this stream, was when D showed off some, uh, old friends who were coming back to pay you a visit. And I'm talking about Year One Weapons. The moment I saw that Shadow Prize pop up on the screen, Oh man, a small tear of joy rolled down my cheeks. I have so many memories from year one. But year one weapons will now be obtainable at light levels up to 335. Now they weren't too clear on this, but from what it sounds like, some year one guns have been added to the legendary Ingram drop pool and will be available at lights up to 335. So you can whip out that shadow prize. You can whip out that devil you know if you're lucky. Now they didn't explain whether or not we can infuse the year ones we might still be holding on to. So I don't know if I'll be able to pull out my shadow prize from the vault and infuse that right up to 320. But knowing that they're available, they're back in the pool, makes me so happy. Zombie Apocalypse is coming back, baby. And that was just another little moment of massive hype for the crowd there. So many people have so many memories of Year One, and uh, I can't wait to be pulling out that Shadow Prize back in the Crucible. Hopefully those uh, that archetype of auto rifles gets a bit of a buff. That's something they're going to be discussing next week on their Sandbox livestream. Now, the only other thing that I can think of from this stream is the brand new Taken Sword. We have no idea how to get it yet, but we know it is a Void Sword with this super cool little swirling Void aura around it. Now, uh, as far as we know, it's a legendary sword, and it acts just like every other sword. We don't know if there's an exotic variant of it. We don't even know if the sword itself is exotic, but we'll be finding that out as the spring update comes out. But that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else from the big April spring update that, uh... I haven't already discussed. 
overall, I'm pretty excited with it. I think the new uh, glamour options, the new armor options are going to be pretty cool. The fact that we're getting, you know, uh, special Spectre and Taken gear that is going to be infusible is definitely the way to go with that sort of glamour system, and we can bring our year one guns back. Overall, in my opinion, good stream from Bungie. We've got a lot to look forward to, and I can't wait to see what the next one, which again does concern the Crucible Sandbox and the PvE Sandbox, changes to weapons, armor, and certain classes. Rest in peace, my Storm Trance. But I can't wait to see what they're going to be doing. But alright, that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to let me know what you think about all of these upcoming changes to Destiny in the comment section below. But anyways, it's going to be it for this one. As always, I am the Black Link. You guardians, stay frosty.